K Emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. Again, right click, run as Maven install. Okay, right click, run as Maven install. Now, if you can see here, when I did right click, run as Maven install, some, something got downloaded right over here. So it says, your log4j 1.2.17 is downloading okay now again if i run the same program it will not say is downloading because the folder the the files has already been downloaded if you can see the log4j has again come up come back okay log4j and 1.2.17 all right so even if again i run this right click run as java application sorry run as maven install it does not do any kind of download if you can see it is not downloading anything as such it has already been downloaded and it has kept it in your machine okay so that offline you can work at any time all right now what if i down uh, remove everything out out from here so if i remove log4j and everything under your org let's say i don't want to do remove all the things i just want to remove org instead of 4j okay so under your this is of 4j so if you can see there are a lot of other packages uh, every now and then i have used it in my project uh, or somewhere in person on person also so there are a lot of different packages which has been downloaded in my machine the the meaning is i have somehow used all these packages okay now let me go back again so if you see here the sl of 4j i've deleted sl of 4j as well as i've deleted my log 4j so right click maven so right click maven sorry run as Maven install. So it says downloading SLF4J, downloading all the things which is really required for this project. Okay. So it says build successful. That means everything has been downloaded. Right. Now, if you just go back to your project, everything is in, in place right now. You just need to use the jar files accordingly. Okay. Anyone has any questions as of now? Jiram, I have a question. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Jiram, yeah. can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, so um, trying to understand, so th this is basically for downloading the jar files and uh, all the, that? Yeah, as of now, I just told you, just to download yeah. the jar files. It also so does a build this, also. Okay, so we do we have to change the XML file every time that... Uh, no, you don't have to change anything here at all. Okay, okay. now what, uh, see, usually what happens down the line, which we are going to see right now, okay? In order to, let's say you have got multiple files, okay? You have got multiple jar files. You want to build these applications, all right? What you can do is you just uh, click on the XML, uh, run as, okay? If you say Maven install, what happens automatically? It downloads the jar file if it is required, okay? Otherwise, if already the jar files are present, it basically builds your application. So when you say Maven install, it basically builds if you see the, your build also, a clean also, if I say clean, it is going to clean your class files. When you say install, it is going to install all your jar files as well as it is going to build the entire project. So when I say entire project, this is my entire project, okay? Because this pom.xml is only for this project. Now if I just go to the navigator out here and just refresh this, okay? And come to the target here. So it is going to create a target folder automatically. And under that, it has created a jar file that is a Maven example. Now, what is this Maven example? Maven example has got list of Java files which are already present in your Maven example. So if I just show you that, D, if I open the D compiler and drag the jar file from here to here. Now, what do you have? You have your logger example, right? So this is the only file which I have created in my project or in my module so the same file has been included in the jar file okay now what do you do if i if you do not do this you basically once you install everything you right click and just say export so when you export you basically come up with a jar file all right 
So this does all the way. Now this is a very small application. Down the line we are going to see uh, when we talk about your web applications. Okay, we are going to use your Maven in order to build the entire project. Okay, now this is a very small application wherein it is going to go to a particular folder. But in case of your web application, we'll see it has got its own directory structure also. Okay, so I'm a little confused about Maven itself. Is it uh, is this some kind of a framework and how can I see this in my Eclipse? Uh, Adil, this is uh, this is a build framework basically. You can say it is a framework, yes, or it is a build tool or it is a script. Okay. Now, uh, what did this script do? The script, first of all, it downloaded the jar files as well as it compiled your, pro, uh, your project and has kept it in a particular folder. If you can see under your uh, target, it has created a created your class files. Okay. So what it did, it has its own structure. It create it copied all the files, all the class files to your classes folder, and everything is intact basically. Okay. Now, if I need my resource, if I just copy this log4j.xml, copy and paste it in my resource folder. Okay. Now, let me just run this example real quick. Uh, so, uh, Jerem, one quick question here. Um, does Maven automatically detect the missing jar files and it download, does. or do we need to? Okay. It does. So it, we don't have to add a dependency for each and every jar that we know we will need. Uh, Right, exactly. Now, if, for example, if you see down the line at one point of time, you will see we will be using SLF4j. Okay, I know this that for SLF4j, okay, uh, what are the other dependencies? Uh, the dependencies are your SLF4 API as well as log4j. Okay, we I, we don't have to, I mean, add up manually. What it does automatically, it installs the related jar files also. Okay. Okay. Now, for example, if I say here, right click, uh, Maven add dependency, SLF, SLF, 4J, hyphen API. Okay, so I think this is the one. All right. So I just say okay out here. Okay. Now I can do it in this way also. I have no problems. I can even have both the dependencies out here, but. There is no point in having this because I know that internally this is going to take care of downloading this automatically. So I do not need to have this in, 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 in picture at all. Okay. So there is no point in having this because this is already been downloaded by your SLF 4J 12. Okay. Just, you just need to understand this one in particular. All right. So ultimately down the line, we are going to see uh, how we are going to use a Maven in particular. And uh, if you, Take any of the build tools. Uh, likewise, I've used uh, Jenkins. Okay, there's a kind of a build tool. You basically configure your uh, Maven out there. But ultimately, most of the project, if you see, they will be using either your Ant. Okay, they'll be using directly your Ant. Okay, so in Ant, you'll be having your build.xml. Uh, they will be using Ant plus IVY. Okay, and uh, in there also, you'll be having your build.xml. This is your ivy.xml. Okay. So and plus ivy. So when I say and, and is corresponding to your build.xml. Okay. So when I say and plus ivy, you'll be having two XMLs. That is your ivy.xml and build.xml. And there is an, uh, an, uh, one more thing that is our Maven. In that Maven, you have got pomp.xml. Okay. Now, what is the history here is uh, initially everybody, they used to write everything as, I mean, uh, a and script used to have. Okay. So what used to happen is you you know that for your example right for your example you need your log4j dot uh, log4j jar file so what you do is in your ant file okay you write all the things like where from i should get the jar files and stuff load those jar files and then you basically um, use it in your in compiling a program okay so right now, if we are not doing those things, automatically Maven is taking care of those things. Okay. If you want to still see those things, you can see by clicking on your effective pomp. So effective pomp does a lot of other things also. All right. So if you have time, you can just very well go and check this. All right. So let me just comment this out. And keep it as it is. Now. The next thing which we are going to uh, which we are going to see or which we need uh, down the line uh, is your servers. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about uh, what to download and what to how to configure things. 
So the very basic thing today we are going to see is, okay, what is Ant? Uh, Madhu, Ant is also a build script, okay? But it is, uh, it does not download your jar files automatically. If you use Ant, you have to write your own scripts. For example, if I want to show you that, and script example. Okay, so if you see here, let me just copy this uh, and put it under your Okay, let me put it here, new, others, XML. build.xml next finish all right now just uh, see here closely uh, what all things are happening here uh, in your and script basically there will be always a starting point and the default out here is your dist okay so where do i see dist here dist property location dist okay so my target is the default target is your DIST, right? So what this DIST does is it, it, it says depends compile. That means before even executing this particular target, it compiles something else. So before even executing this, the very first thing it comes and invokes this one. So before even this, it goes and invokes your init. Now what it does, it init does your make directory. So with the help of your uh, and script you can even create a directory dynamically okay that's what it says make directory a dirs build okay and once this is done what you do is basically you say java c now see you are compiling your program from your and script itself you are saying java c and the source directory is nothing but your source directory which you have given okay so here it says the source directory is nothing but your location as src all right i can even use this build script somewhere here also okay now destination directory, you're saying the destination directory is a build. Now what is, what is a build? If you, this is a build. Now if you just see this JDBC uh, module, we are not doing anything automatically, a couple of things are happening, but uh, if you want to specifically want to divert your particular code to some other file, you can basically do it using your build.xml. Okay, so you're saying the location is your build.xml. Right now, our location is what? By default, our location is your bin. I can even right click properties, and say source and just change this to your let's say jram i want to say jram here my output directory is jram okay so when i say yes automatically a jram folder got created so that is your uh, your uh, property of your eclipse now if you are not using eclipse what will you do in order to compile your program right so in that case you will need some kind of scripting program wherein from your command prompt itself you can basically say and build.xml or you just say and okay so when you say and very well i don't have the class path uh, defined otherwise if you say and you can easily uh, i mean compile a script okay i mean you can run a script now if you see here in my d drive uh, i have got something known, known as your apache and so you can just put this in your class path so that you have nothing but this one and okay so this comes into picture all right so these uh, these things as of now uh, don't need it if you your uh, application is using it you can very well go and learn this but this is a, just a one time process now what what is this doing it is basically building your uh, what is the source directory what is the destination directory now it compiles your complete source directory now what do you do in your command prompt you say java c right so the same java c is out here your and script is using a java c okay and after your compilation is done, it does uh, it does again make some directory and copy your jar file, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, if you can see, this is a jar file, the jar file, which is really required. It, it, it You can even load a jar file. Here, the script does not have anything to load a jar file. You can be, very well even load a jar file. Okay. If you just write directly run your ants. Now, as of now, in this example, uh, right click properties. I have explicitly defined my libraries here, right? If I do not define my libraries i will basically get a compile time error right so but if in order to compile a complete project you need this so the same thing if you in your if you use your and if you want to compile a complete project you can basically load your scripts here there are different tags also which we are now going to see in this case okay so did you get a rough idea what is an and it is a completely scripting language okay now 
on top of your ant uh, maybe uh, ant plus ivy came into picture now this is just everything you have to do it manually you have to load your jar files put it in the, in your class path and everything you have to do it manually okay now instead of doing that oh now i if i use simply ant okay i have to manually tell where my dependent jar files are are there for example in this case my uh, log4j right if i use my jdbc program, uh, module and what not what what kind of other jar files also okay no but i do not want to do that i want to dynamically plug in the jar files from the internet so what happened is on top of your ant a new concept came that is your ant plus ivy now ivy what it does it is it is basically going to plug in all your jar files from the internet so what you do with a combination of your ant plus ivy okay ant plus ivy you use your ant script no doubt the same thing what you do or you do it here but you use ivy only for your dependency jar files okay you will show you the ivy example it's again from your apache okay so apache guys have given a lot of other things now if you see dependency if you if i just copy this or i think you can see this now you see dependency let me just expand this now okay you say dependency org common lang blah 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 okay now if this is for your log 4j you say dependency org organization equals to log 4j all right so more or the less the ivy and the log ivy and as well as your pom.xml are the same the only thing is they follow their own structures okay but if you see the group id the artifact id instead of group id artifact id they are using the org okay and the name okay but we will be using as the group id and the artifact id in case of a maven okay and the version here they are saying yes version here here they are saying rev revision okay so there are a couple of differences but it is it is very minimal okay so even we are not going to see this ivy.xml uh, it's again uh, a kind of a de uh, dependency injection all right now uh, talking about these build tools what next we are going to use in our advanced courses okay so i would request you guys to uh, download your apache tomcat because that is what we are going to use it so from where and how do you download these things so just go to your uh, internet and just say uh, apache tomcat download it go it takes you to the apache tomcat website and uh, click on any of the versions out here i have i have used a uh, tomcat 7.0 this is again uh, we are going to uh, we in the next class we are going to talk about your uh, web servers okay not web services web servers are different web services are different okay so we are going to talk about your web applications okay so for that reason you can use any of these things you can use your uh, zip file you can you if you want to use uh, install it as a installable or deployer you can use the zip file out here or basically i have used the core the zip out here okay so once you download this what i did if you can see here uh, in my d drive i just copied and extracted out here as apache tomcat okay so once you install your apache tomcat uh, how do you make sure that your apache tomcat is up and running under your bin folder just go and say startup okay so when you click on this basically your server is going to come up okay so when your server is going to come up how do you make sure your server is up just go to your browser and just say localhost 8080 okay the default port for your apache tomcat is 8080 okay so if you see this page that means you are all set okay so make sure uh, before even coming uh, to the next class do all these configurations okay and even we will see how to how to uh, use this apache tomcat from your eclipse also okay so as we are going to deploy everything uh, in your eclipse itself okay we are see, going to see how to use this uh, how to use the apache tomcat using your eclipse we will try to plug in that okay and if you see here uh, other diff lot of other things uh, the only thing how can i download maven in eclipse uh, adil i have already told that in the previous in the in the current videos if you see that but again i'll just tell you that just go to your help 
and just eclipse market and uh, just say maven out here right so when you say maven make sure the one which i'm comfortable you can use this as well all right maven integration for eclipse you can very well go and experiment all these things also okay all right so today we have learned about uh, the build uh, the build tool or a dependency injection this is what we are going to use it down the line also okay so anyone has any uh, silly doubts wherein you guys can ask me um oh uh, jeram mm -hmm. hello can you hear me yes i can yeah i'm very sorry I, i mean my just in the meanwhile my machine got stuck so i couldn't hear you uh, after you install the um, maven uh -huh. and then uh, you went to the build part and uh, did something uh, this uh, dependency mm -hmm. injection mm -hmm. how how to do that in very short uh, you could tell me uh, okay all right so in very short the very first thing is if you have understood how to create a maven project okay create a maven project and then just directly jump onto your pom.xml okay Form. in your pom.xml just right click and just say maven add dependency all right okay. so add. there are a lot of dependencies let's say i say hibernate so down the line if i if i talk about hibernate where is it hibernate mm -hmm. is not coming okay if you see at the at the bottom it says uh, repository in search okay so it is searching somewhere from the internet xyz so i just let's say i'm going to use my hibernate okay so i just say okay so hibernate got added out here as at the same time if mm -hmm. i go to my package explorer i can see okay it's not been added out here okay so all the related uh, jar files related to hibernate also got added here okay so if okay. i just go to your dependency hierarchy if i click on hibernate all the other things which are related to hibernate has been downloaded mm -hmm. automatically okay 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 so it is something that uh, we want to use some other tool and we are just uh, putting it into uh, i mean through this dependency uh, not other tools method. we uh, we need jar files okay? okay and instead of manually copying from the internet putting it in a library folder and then putting that in right. your class path you are basically uh -huh. telling to the script itself to your okay. pom.xml so pom.xml does all the magic for you okay so we have to look for this pom.xml and there we have, we have to choose or which one do we want to uh, inject there right uh yeah i mean see as of now for my project as, as of for this particular program i just need log4j mm -hmm. correct i don't need hibernate right. related jar files right for correct. that reason i just used my log4j anything related to logging itself if i want to mm -hmm. let's say this this particular module expands it keeps on growing mm -hmm. uh, let's say uh, today i have used spring tomorrow i am using hibernate the after tomorrow i am using some other extra jar files right you keep on adding jar files okay so you keep on adding those jar files in your pomodoro mm -hmm. okay okay so we have to do download this uh, maven and then after that uh, the pop, we have to go to this pom and uh, try to add the, this uh, right you have to add the dependencies okay you have to be pretty much familiar because down the line every now and then we'll be using this so i i make sure that you understand these things properly all right okay okay and uh, any questions folks from anyone no questions all right so if there is no questions then we can just wind up and we will meet up on uh, on monday again ha uh, jeram yes yeah is it possible to upload the today's video as soon as possible before monday uh, because i think yeah uh, exactly <laughs> i i can yeah, do that uh, i can do that okay okay i will so request i will request one doing one. it so it all depends on uh, the admin folks but again i'll, I'll push them to do that okay right all right thank you yep sure all right thank and, you uh, uh, yeah. again uh, jeram this video will be